So today I'm joined by Marielle Wise, CEO of the much coveted fashion brand Wise London, known initially for its colourful cashmere and supremely wearable range. The brand appeals to those in Marielle's words who want something elevated, luxurious, but also unexpected and a bit fabulous. And having known Marielle for some 20 years now, and before she was a fashion designer, I would say those words describe Marielle perfectly. Elevated, luxurious, unexpected, and totally fabulous. Welcome, Marielle. Thank you, Tracy. The check's in the post. <laughs> So, Marielle, when I, when, we, when I met you all those years ago, we worked in television. Fast forward a few years, and now you are the CEO of a global fashion empire. That is the mother of all career pivots. So how did that happen? Um, well, I don't think we're a fashion empire, first of all, but we're on hopefully on the road to being quite... Um, you know, a, a good, solid, big brand. Um, how did it happen? all by accident, really, rather than intent. So I would say that uh, it's a very much a story of a woman who was in television, worked with you, um, uh, yeah, was it 20 years ago? Uh, and then gave up work because of commitment with the children and, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Life got in the way, I think the, the expression is. And then one day scratched my head and thought, I have to do something because I'm a bit bored. And so I designed five cashmere jumpers and I went to a funny little house sale and put it on a rail and people started picking them up. No one actually bought anything, may I say, but they looked at them and I thought, well, at least they're looking at them. And um, and that's how it that was the, how it started, basically. Yeah. Um, and, and that was only that wasn't very long ago, was it? It was like, what, five or six years? ago? So, yeah, six and a half, seven years ago now. So and so yeah. when you look back at where you um, how you started and where you are now, what are the two what are the two differences? Where I, st oh goodness me, I've learned, well, I've learned, I'm learning, I've never done any of this before. So what, what the differences are that I know a little bit more about what I'm doing, not a ton, but I'm constantly every day learning. I'm learning what it's like to run a business, what it's like to design, how, how all the elements of design have to deliver, you know. There's so much that I'm learning. I mean, every day is like, you know, it's just a new set of rules that I didn't have the day before. So it's been extraordinary in that in that respect. And, and I think one thing that I always think is that, you know, I'm making this whole thing up, you know, and, 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 and it's great that it's kind of half working. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, what you've done is so admirable to so many people um, that I think uh, you, you've, you've gone from one career to another career completely. And you, you've started something completely from scratch because you're not a fashion designer by by trade or by by training. So uh, tell us a little bit about designing those first five sweaters, cashmere sweaters that nobody bought to running this 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 brand that. You know, it's it's you've you've opened a high street shop a shop in Marlebone. Um, you know, you you have like hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram. I mean, it's it's as I say, much much coveted. Um, I think um, to be honest with you, I think that I don't I don't actually really know the answer to any of it because I haven't done, like I say, it's not like I've worked in a fashion business before but there was one thing that I heard once um, and it was actually the founder of Not on the High Street that said it and Holly Tucker she's called and basically what she said was when you're thinking of redoing your career possibly later in life uh, think back to what you loved to do as a child and what I loved to do as a child was to make um, clothes so I used to go to the John Lewis or a fabric, funny little fabric store and just get that and, and like trimmings and go home and my mother could sew. So the joy of creating has always been, you know, I've always I used to make my kids clothes and stuff like that. And so I've always loved that. And I still get a real buzz from something coming out and just going, oh my goodness, we thought of that from nothing. And that's a really exciting bit. So that's something that I think that if you're, thinking of another chapter in your life that's a good thought to have I think um in terms of 
The rest of it, honestly, Tracy, I've learned on the job. There's no other way to say it. I've made a mistake. I've made another mistake, quite similar, hopefully not exactly the same. And you just have to keep just moving forward. And then all of a sudden you get it semi-right and you think, okay, this is going in the right direction. Yeah. So so I guess the things that I see in, in that story is that you're making it sound like, well, I just learn on the job and I, I don't know how I did it. But there are a lot of things that are involved in that, like tenacity, resilience, you know, uh, presumably bouncing back or what, what have been the strong, what have been the most important qualities do you think that, that, that have kept you going? Um, I think conviction. So I think, you know, belief that you have got, I think knowing what you, what it is that you're trying to do ultimately. And I think for me, it's trying to make a lady that potentially is forgotten, feel good about herself. And I think that's my, you know, that's what I can hear. And that's what I feel myself because, you know, I feel like, where do I shop? So it's very much that, um, yeah, I just, I think, I think resilience is definitely, you know, of course you have to have such thick skin because, um, you, and, and also that whole kind of, it feels like a cliche saying it, but it's so true. When you, when it goes wrong, you learn. When it goes right, you don't really learn. You just think, oh, well, that was great. And, you know, you're on a high because it's gone right. But I've had some, you know, some big flops and, and, and I just think, okay. What are we learning here? And, and and you take it as a positive. So you have to shift your mindset. Plus, I have to say one of the biggest things that I think, there is luck, but and definitely I've had some of that, but I think it's hard work, sheer hard work. Mm. And, and uh, you know, I would say I work probably 12 to 16 hour days, if mm. I'm honest. Mm, mm. You know, but that- the hour's down. Yeah, so working hard, but but having that conviction, and I think I guess that conviction by another name is purpose, like something that really drives you. Yeah. So uh, and 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 also that 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 um, and I love what you say about failure because I mean the way I see failure is it's just development in disguise. You're so it's so right. You don't learn anything from success really. It's only in uh, falling over and getting up again that you learn. Yeah. Yeah, and sort of putting it in perspective sometimes as well. You know, you have to have a perspective because if you don't have a perspective, then it will just get you down. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I think one thing that comes with running a business is responsibility. And the responsibility often is the thing I still, even like 10 minutes ago, I was looking around thinking, oh my goodness, how did this happen? <laughs> you know, and I'm looking at all the people in the office and I'm just thinking, I don't understand half of why this happened, but you know, that's great still in a way. What I love about that is that you have so successfully, you know, um, transitioned into a very successful career and yet you're, you are still uh, exhibiting signs of imposter syndrome. So do, do you, do you acknowledge that in yourself? Do you feel that you have imposter syndrome? And if so, how do you deal with that? You, you have it on it. And if you don't have it, I think there's something wrong. I think you have it on an hourly or, you know, you know hourly basis I think you how do you deal with it you acknowledge it and you just say well that's the way it is, that it is and then you just you just go with what you think is right you can't you can't you can't be anything other than who you are you know and so you just trust you trust your instinct I mean I think we've had one huge uh, advantage. It's not really an advantage, but it's something that we created inadvertently for ourselves, which is a conversation with the customer. And I think that that has really, really, and it's something that I am thankful for all the time, because if you have got a conversation, basically, if you could roll back, the, the most important person in our business is our customer. It's not, you know, it's great to have all the team and everything, but we need to show the customer that we're thinking of her. I think that that dialogue we have with the customer is so strong and so uh, important. And, um, and that is something that really, yeah, that's, that's key to our business. And I think it's something very, very striking about your brand, because when I look at your, your Instagram feed, you know, you, you often do these amazing um, live Insta- Instagram live, which is just you with a rack of clothes talking very naturally, not showy kind of uh, just 
on and off go the clothes, you talk through, you have, you literally have that conversation. And um, so there's something there that I think is, is just about um, authenticity and vulnerability. And do you think that that is particularly important in that demographic? I mean, we're talking sort of middle-aged women, right? Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very much. Um, Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a word that I use quite a lot, which is demystifying. And um, I think that, you know, everyone thinks, oh, I'm a fashion brand, therefore I'm so special and therefore I can only do what I think is right and you will, you know, you will do what you're told, i.e. to the customer. It's like, well, actually, they won't, number one, because they'll tell you because they'll buy it or they won't. So forget about that. And, you know, after all, this is a, this is a two-way street. You know, it's, it's, I want to make you feel better. And if you don't think that piece is going to make you feel better, then why would I, why do I want to make that? Because if, even if I love it hundred percent and you don't want to buy it, then so be it. You know, you're the boss here really. Um, so I respect the customer enormously. Yes. And, and in terms of that, um, a lot of the clients that I work with are that um, mid career or, or, or exec level, that middle, you know, women from 40 to 50, you know, and what, what for you um, is, is special, remarkable, or, or what are the considerations for that age group? Um, they want to, they want to still shout, but if that makes sense, they want to still be noticed, but they want to not be worn by. So they want to, they want elevation. You know, they, that word elevated is very real. They want to feel just that 20% better about themselves, you know, that or, or 90%, whatever it is. You just want that little icing thing in clothing. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's about the reality of wearing. And I do see, you know, there's lots of wonderful fashion brands out there, but some of them I'm just like, how do you wear that? That's just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Who's wearing this? Who's in charge here? And um, I think that, that the lovely messages that I get from the customers saying, you know, that it's just made them feel so much better about themselves and so much psychology is behind how you dress in the morning, what you put on, mm-hmm. Um so yeah. yeah, it's 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 really it's really fundamental. Yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, one of the things that I, I I always do remember about you, um, or something that I've always felt about you, is that you just had a very strong sense of self, and you did have um, a strong sense of self confidence. When I look back, you were always very poised, and uh, <laughs> I remember you teaching me things about about fashion and and cuts and and all of that kind of thing. So. Have you always had that sort of inner confidence and poise? Well, I don't think I do, by the way. Uh, but um, um, I'm glad I put that exterior out there. Um, I think that I think that my mother had an ability to make Primark look like it wasn't Primark. So she had, you know, she made it always look a bit really super expensive. And you used to say, "Mom, how did you do that?" So I think that thing of putting things together. I hope that. I've got a little bit of that. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. I think it's just, I, I guess, because my mother's French and I just, I just, I love putting clothes together and I, there's, you know, it's, I just, that's just in my, it's in my blood, that bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you for that. Anyway, we, we've all got a bit of your elegance, but hang on. I also wanted to ask you, um, you know, what, what, what have been in either in that transition or in, in your current role, what are the kind of biggest um, obstacles or, uh, or, or what's the, the biggest adversity that you're coming up against or have come up against and how did you tackle it? Um, oh, my goodness, there's one every day. Um, oh, there's so many, Tracy. Honestly, there's so <laughs> many, like... <laughs> I don't know it's if it's not product it's you know it's 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 how you manage people it's it's how you move it forward you know uh, a cousin of mine is in fashion he said you have chosen the hardest industry to be in you realize that because you know you've got it right this season you got to do it all again and uh, and uh, so you're constantly having to reinvent the wheel and stay relevant and all that so I think product is is number one you've got to make your products sing every season then you've got everything else that go I mean 
every day there's seven million challenges and you know you just have to you know now my latest thing is like listening to diary of ceo or whatever it is and just taking steps in how you manage your own feelings yes. to things as well you know there's 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 managing people but there's also managing you have to manage yourself mm-hmm. and uh because no one's managing you um so there's there's problems every, everywhere it's how you deal with them that's yeah it. well sometimes those problems are like challenges that are energizing or problems or obstacles that are de-energizing so uh yeah yeah 100 yeah. percent yeah. yeah. And how do you manage yourself then? What what goes into your diary of a CEO? Uh, uh, fitness is important for me because if I don't have physical fitness, it's it's almost top of my list. I cannot have mental fitness. So for me, keeping fit and keeping strong is so, so fundamental to me then being able to be calm. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. I sort of think actually age is quite a good one as well. I think as you get older, you get definitely a little bit wiser and you get, um, you just get a little, you just try and shake things off more easily. So I think I try not to let things get to me in the same way that they used to, you know. So that's perspective or something, is it? It's being rational. Rational. It's using, it's using, yeah, it's like, being, you know, thinking about things calmly and, you know, like putting things down, thinking about it, walking away and come, because, you know, your gut is like, mm, this is really, you know, da, da, da. but you, that's not how, that's not a productive way to react to things. Yeah, brilliant. And you, you've clearly had success in two different industries. You know, when mm. you, when you think about success, how do you measure it? What does success look like? Uh, I think it's doing something that you look forward to doing every day. I was, I mean, I think both careers that I've had, you know, in our days and this day, it's just feeling like I can achieve something today. And I think I've been really lucky in that I've been in two careers where I've just feel, I mean, I am definitely a creative person that much. I've realized I cannot, I mean, getting onto this podcast required a sort of, you know, an A level in, in, in podcasts and, uh, and, um, and, and, you know, a spreadsheet, honestly, you couldn't, it, you, I can't, I think something happens to my brain as an area of it shuts down. Uh, but if you put lovely color cards in front of me, I'm in heaven, you know? So it, you, I think acknowledging what you're really, what really makes you happy to get up in the morning and what really makes you, and just seeing if you can go with that, if you can make a career of that and then trying your absolute hardest and grafting that that's what I think it's about. Yeah. Wonderful. And, and, um, uh, you're clearly going to serve as an inspiration to many people who want to make a career pivot to what I call passion, you know, passion to passion. So if you had to give tips to people wanting to make a similar or a pivot, a career pivot at, at this age, um, what, what, what comes to mind? Um, I think that you have to be brave. Because um, I think that's the one thing that I would encourage people is to, and don't listen to what people say, because people will just look at you and go, what kind of thing? They won't say it, but you'll, you, they won't say it. They say it's great. And then behind that, you're thinking, no, you're not thinking that, are you? You're thinking I'm a bit stupid. So uh, um, I think you have to ignore people. You have to, you have to be, you know, quite pig headed, I think, and stubborn and, um, and I think the most important thing is to try. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if you don't try, you'll never know, you know. And I, I honest, honestly, there is, no, if you'd asked me this, you know, three years ago, even three years ago, if you'd said, do you think you'll be here now? I'd say absolutely not even in the zone. So you, you've got to give it a go because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And Marielle, on that note, this is only the second career that you've had. You know, what, what might be the third Oh my goodness, no. I'm too tired. <laughs> don't, don't, don't give me a heart attack. <laughs> okay, wonderful. My last question is, um, if I had to ask you for three golden rules or a motto to live by, what, what would yours be? Keep fit and healthy. 
uh, laugh, um, and um, what would be my third one? Probably like look at flowers and things like that. Oh, look at beautiful things. I love, I love nature. I love nature. I mean, I go around Kew Gardens sort of naming plants in Latin and stuff like that. Wow. Okay. I think I found your third career. <laughs> you could be the there could be the curate curator of flowers at Kew yeah. Gardens or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. Listen, yeah. you you honestly you are so inspirational, and um, I just love your your well all of those things that you said bravery and stubbornness and you know and determination and also huge creativity to just start with an idea and then transform it into a brand and and a coveted brand and one that speaks to so many people with such authenticity and also a gap in the market. I mean, your cousin said, oh, okay, you've done the, the hardest industry, but good heavens, you found a, an audience that wasn't being served. And that I just think is remarkable. Well, I'm one of, I'm, I'm one of, I am my audience, I'm her. So, you know, I'm, I'm basically doing it for myself, if I'm honest. <laughs> So be selfish, yeah. Do it for yourself. Be yeah. Selfish with another yeah. one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Marriott, so just remind us your the can the the new store, I know it opened it hang on, is it this year or did it open last year? Um uh, it's, it opened last uh oh my goodness, it's opened in September. So opened in September. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. Marlebone High Street in London. Marlebone. Yeah. That's but right. obviously wiselondon.com um on uh, on the internet. Correct. And and I would really urge anybody watching or listening to uh, check out Marielle's Instagram lives because they oh, are brilliant. They brilliant. are really symbolic, is what you mean. But no, but that but that's why they work. I mean, that's you know, I, I you that's why they work, isn't it? Because they're really engaging and truthful and honest, and it's an honest conversation. Anyway, I, I want to thank you so much for taking time thank out you. of your busy CEO life. And thank you for joining me on the Fast Track to Fearless. Thank you for having me. Nice to see you, Tracy. You too. <laughs>